Namo Buddhaya. So uh, today is very simple, basic teachings. So I won't be make it so complicated. Yeah, uh, maybe that's the reason some of people uh, didn't join. Maybe due to some other reasons as well. So it's fine. Let them join later. Maybe tomorrow they will be joined. Okay. So uh, as we today, we we should uh, recall because today is a full moon day. It's also a day of uh, Madhu Purnima, which is a uh, commemorance of Buddha's. Uh, establishment of a Bhikkhuni Sangha by uh, Prajapati Gautami and Yashodhara and all the uh, Bhikkhuni female uh, nuns and also Buddha went into a forest to do his own retreat and where these two elephant and monkey uh, serve the Buddha and give the honey to the Buddha as a symbol of Dana Paramita. So today is very blessed day and it's very uh, good to accumulate uh, good merits, you know. So, um, yeah, for this, uh, all, because all full moons are dedicated to Buddhas, you know, in his lifetime, all the 12, 12 months of full moon is very dedicated to Buddha himself, and also some other uh, Mahasiddhas and Guru Rinpoche's uh, date, okay. Because uh, Buddha is our main teacher, Without the uh, Shakyamuni Buddha, there will be no um, Dharma that we are listening today. There will be no Theravada, there will be no uh, Mahayana and Vajrayana and so on. You see, uh, without Shakyamuni, it is, uh, we cannot hear the, uh, the Dharma anyways, you know. So in order to that, uh, that's why today we are understanding the Buddha's intention to spread the Dharma. And why, as a disciple, as unenlightened being, why we take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha? And uh, basic two teachings that we are confer to you, as uh, Buddha teach the first wheel of Dharma, Dharma Chakra Pravatana Sutra, and also three Lakshana Sutra, the three, three characteristic of the world, where he first giving the sermon in Saranat by Panchavagya Bhikkhu, five, 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 the five monks, the first teachings of Four Noble Truth and Eight Four Noble Path, and the very night of it, uh, Buddha gave uh, this three Lakshana of Sutta, which is very profound and very nice to as a basic uh, teachings that we are uh, recollect again and again and again. Okay, so the appearance of the Buddha is uh, very rare in this universe, and most important to become a human being or in the birth of a human realm is very rare okay so in that sense we are all fortunate to have the buddha shakyamuni the fourth buddha of this uh, fortunate aeon and also the 28 buddhas which is according to theravada tradition which is uh, shakyamuni is the 28th buddha of this uh, buddha's uh, lineage yeah so we are very fortunate to have him which he sacrificed his life, his enjoyments, his families, and he, he suffered for six months of uh, extreme, uh, how to say, extreme uh, meditations, yeah, ascetism. And no one can do that actually, even you, me, we cannot do in the stage of Prince Siddhartha where he do this kind of uh, pr extreme practices just to benefit for the sentient beings, you know. That's the great compassion of all the Buddhas, yeah. So in order that uh, we should understand why Buddha wants to do this thing for all of us, you know, have these thoughts to recollect every day. But that's why I say we always should recollect the merits of the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Why and why we have to, okay. Uh, in Dharmapada, Buddha have mentioned that uh, sentient beings, out of fear and conflict, they went to a shrine, they went to a tree, they went from, how to say, mountains and so on to take refuge in those uh, be in those beings or spirits and so on. But that's not a uh, ultimate refuge, where a person take refuge in the Buddha Dharma and Sangha, where he enlightened himself and he knows the path that he. 
to practice and attain the state of what the Buddha had attained, you know. Okay, we we suffered in this uh, universe. I mean, we we because of our past deeds of our karma, karmic uh, retribution, we take a, uh, you know, we take a uh, rebirth in this samsara world circle. Not only the six realms, we have thirty one realms as well. So in these thirty one realms, we take refu uh, we take re rebirth according to our karma. And uh, why we happen because of that? Because of twelve uh, dependent origination. You know, Pratyaksha Samupada, if you, if you, if you get uh, the text, maybe you can understand it. Okay. Uh, Bhavatanha, because we are craving to reborn again and again because of desire, hatred and ignorance. Because of three, three poisons, we, we, we actually uh, turning the cycle of this trap thing, uh, trap dependent origination, which we take rebirth again and again in these 31 planes of existence. But in Vajrayana, we say six realms, which is uh, Deva realms, Ashura realms, human realms, and uh, animal, Angrigos, and Naraka. But apart from that, we have more than realms, more more realms, like Brahma realms, uh, all the Abhasara realms, and Akanishta realms, and uh, formless realms, all these realms, which we take rebirth into it. Okay? So, that's why 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 we take refuge in the Buddha and Dharma and Sangha. First, we need to understand the suffering of our the reality of suffering of the world. You know, you like to suffer again and again. You born, die, born, <laughs> die, and re rebirth again, and then you have suffer all kinds of things, mentally suffer, physically suffer, and some more worse than you go reborn in hell where you have to suffer inconceivable of times you know so by knowing this out of great fear we take refuge in the buddha dharma and sangha you know that we create an accumulation of merits that we won't fall into um, lower realms like hell asuras animal and hungry spirits ghost but doesn't mean that you take refuge in the buddha dharma and sangha you are free from all this thing no actually it's not like that why we take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha? Because we are unenlightened. We not yet understood the reality, understood what has to be understood, you know. So that's why we take refuge in the Buddha like a doctor, you know. He knows everything. He sees everything. He sees the part to end of all these things, you know. We, by knowing, understand his qualities, the enlightened qualities of his body, speech and mind. We admire aspire to become like him we take refuge in him it's not something that you are take refuge in him you don't need to do whatever you want to do you just believe him you take refuge and everything that's settled no no such thing in buddhism buddhas always encourage with a uh, experiential experiential and also analytic view on your thoughts on this reality yeah so the dharma is like what he have teach it's just like medicines you know because uh, it's kind of light where we are suffering in this uh, darkness of ignorance, hatred and so on. We are still suffering. Even though our past life and next life, we don't know where we are going, what happened to us. But at least in this lifetime, you're born as a human being. You can have a chance to escape this uh, samsara cyclic existence. So in order that, we listen to the dharma of the Buddha's teachings. Then we go to a sangha. Why we take refuge in the Sangha is that just having a Buddha and Dharma, but you don't have any guidance beside you. We said a Kalyana Mitra, uh, of spiritual friends uh, beside you, then uh, it's very hard. Sometimes we read, we understand the Buddha's teachings. In one part of time, our mind will be in conflict. Our mind will be very unstable. Our mind will be like, have loosened the fate. So in order to encourage you, in order to show the path, the guidance, in order to make your mind stable, then I think this Kalyana Mitra or this spiritual friend or Sangha is very, very important. And also not for that, we actually preserve uh, the Buddha's teaching by helping the Sangha community, uh, the monk and nuns, yogis and yoginis, and those lamas and Rinpoche monasteries and all these things, we're actually helping them not only to, to sustain their uh, 
the uh, daily needs, but it also sustained the teachings, the quality, the pureness of the lineage, the pureness of the teachings is still exist, and the result is still exist. So in order to preserve the Buddha and his Dharma, we should preserve via the Sangha. If there's no Sangha, then I think the Dharma will be not good. Because some, uh, some countries, they will have some Buddha temples, uh, viharas, and some of them have Dharma teachings, but if there's no Sangha members, then I think it's very hard to propagate the Buddha Dharma. It's very hard to preserve in that uh, particular places and time. So I think Sangha is very, very important. So in that we understanding it, we take refuge in the Sangha. Yeah, this is a three, triple gem in our Buddhist tradition. Okay. So, as I say, not because of fate, not because of, um, you know, uh, we, we check, they take refuge to Buddha, Dharma and Sangha and everything, um, my problem is solved, I was liberated and I will go to a heaven or this and that. It's not a particular fate, just accepting the Buddha, you will be fine. No, we should accepting ourselves by knowing the suffering. And the causes of suffering that we have created for many, many millennia that Buddha enlightened and gave the teachings to free ourselves. It's like someone, you are in prison and someone is uh, giving your key to unlock the prison gate and you have to escape it. That's it. So this is something like that. Why we take refuge in Buddha Dharma Sangha? Because of faith. One number one is a faith of shraddha, of confidence in the Buddhas and Dharma and Sangha where we aspire to practice more to attain the state of uh, nirvana or to free from this uh, samsaric cyclic existence and all this dukkha. Okay? So this is the first reason uh, why we take refuge in the Buddha and Dharma and Sangha. Okay? Uh, I would like to, uh, in, in Theravada tradition, there is a, a Buddha Nushati, Dhamma Nushati and Sangha Nushati. It's very nice praises. I don't know uh, are some of you in Theravada tradition before or not. But I, I say all the yanas, all the traditions, you know, Theravada, Mahayana, Vajrayana is like a education system, a stage. If you don't have a Theravada teachings, basically, you cannot understand the broad view of Mahayana and very secret view of the Vajrayana itself. Like Madhyamika and Mahamadhyamika on that. It's because all is come from this uh, Theravada source, because the basic of things. So that's like uh, Theravada is like a uh, primary school. If you have no primary syllabus, you cannot go to a PhD level of like Vajrayana system. Okay, so just view in that way. Theravada, Mahayana, they all are the Buddha's teachings in base of categorized and stages as according to the people mindset. You know, you don't need to be saying, oh, you see, I'm a Vajrayana. Oh, you're Theravada, you're Hinayana, your view is not good. You should not have this kind of thoughts of sectarianism or traditional hierarchy. We should not have these thoughts. In, as a Buddhist, as a Sangha members, yeah. So uh, let me see the qualities of the Buddha. Okay. Uh, before that, uh, we take refuge in the Buddha Dharma Sangha as a traditional way of uh, Buddha's lineage or time. Uh, the first, uh, first uh, Sangha who take refuge in the Buddha and Dharma is the five bhikkhus, and then after him, the first lay person who take refuge in the Buddha and Dharma is uh, the two merchants from the Myanmar, where Buddha give him the, the hair to them as a symbol of appreciation. And the hair still was kept in the pagoda in the Myanmar, the first two merchants of uh, this Myanmar people. Yeah. So now we let's recite together and take refuge in the Buddha. We recite in Pali tradition. You can uh, repeat after me to take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. By knowing the qualities of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato. Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato 
अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्धस ओके लेट मी टेक रिफ्यूजन द बुद्धा धर्मा संगत थ्री टाइम्स यू कैन रिपीट आफ्टर मी बुद्धम शरणम गच्छामि धम्मम शरणम गच्छामि संगम शरणम गच्छामि संगम शरणम गच्छामि ततियंपि बुद्धम शरणम गच्छामि ततियंपि बुद्धम धर्मम शरणम गच्छामि ततियंपि संगम शरणम गच्छामि साधु 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 सो टुडे यू टेक रिफ्यूज इन द बुद्धा धर्मा संगा फ्रॉम नाउ नाउ ऑन यू आर हायर ऑफ द बुद्धा सन सन एंड डॉटर Yeah, you are the part to accepting, not accepting in blindly, but accepting the qualities of the Buddha Dharma and Sangha, the the wisdom of the Buddha Dharma and Sangha. By knowing, by realizing, by actualizing, you embrace this triple gem in your heart. Wherever your life exists, you take refuge in three jewels. Yeah, that's very very important. So in order, it makes you to boost yourself to practice more. to gain more uh, experiential knowledge in dharma until you attain the enlightenment to benefit of all sentient beings so that is very important as as a buddhist we take refuge in the buddha dharma and sangha okay so the buddha's qualities have nine qualities you know because whenever you say buddha dharma sangha buddham saranam gachami dhammam sa what is what is actually buddha buddha is not someone a man who left home and become enlightened and not only him we are not take refuge on him but we take refuge his qualities the buddha qualities that he attained the samyak sambuddha you know well uh, in enlightened state we have uh, basically we have three types of buddhas yeah we first have to know the the first one is uh, samyak sambuddha with all the qualities all the perfections all the whatever have to be accomplished it has accomplished is the samyak sambuddha which is our shakyamuni buddha you know before him is the 28 buddhas tanhankara medankara saranankara am ankil to our shakyamuni and after the shakyamuni is maitreya and 10 more buddhas and thousand more buddhas to come they all are samyak sambuddhas with all the faculties and qualities are ripen are matured okay second type of enlightened being is the pratyeka buddhas these pratyeka buddhas they are very similar with samyak sambuddha but just some of the faculties they cannot uh, cannot have cannot ripen for example they cannot preach according to the people's mind they cannot preach the fully dharma to ripen you know to propagate so that's why they call as the pratyeka buddha means silent buddhas they cannot preach yet they attain enlightenment we are understanding the pratyeka samuppada the twelve dependent origination the becoming and uh, dissolving by knowing this they attain the buddha put the buddha state you know that's that's uh, how this pratyeka buddhas but pratyeka buddhas are everywhere you can see they are everywhere but just they cannot preach once the samyak sambuddha was come or appeared in this world these pratyeka buddhas just will be vanished just like that they won't be in this world because there can be there can't be more buddhas than one buddha 
you know in this world system so that's why they will like like dissolve or become rainbow body or somewhat they will become vanish and the third types of enlightened beings is arahant arahant is someone who has a fully uh, cut off their clashes, cut off their afflictions and all, attain the state of enlightenment, yet they are not fully repent. The wisdom is not yet fully repent of uh, like Samyak Sambuddha. Arahan is someone like who are going to some place, but yet they're taking rest in some heart. So that heart, that place is actually the Arahan, that state. Yeah? So, this is very clearly explained in the Lotus Sutra, which you can go and uh, read for yourself, okay? So, as I say, the, in Buddha qualities, they have nine uh, Buddha qualities. What is that? Let me see for itself. First, I recite in, in, in Pali, then I explain one by one. Itipiso Bhagava Araham Samma Sambuddho Vijja Charana Sampanno Sugato Loka Viddu Anuttaro Purisa Dhamma Sarati Satha Deva Manushana Buddha Bhagava Iti. So, what these nine qualities of the Buddha? Bhagava means blessed one. Arahato means attain Arahan. Samma Sambuddho. He is a fully enlightened being, a Samyak Sambuddha. Sugato means he is always in state of. Sugata means someone who attained a state of bliss, an enlightened bliss, you know, Sugata, the kind of bliss. Sugato. Loka Vidu. Loka Vidu means knower of the, all the worlds. He understands the process becoming and dissolution of all the world systems. Uh, I mean, in, in physically, metaphysically, in whatever it is. He knows everything in this universe or in the worlds. You know? Loka Vidu. Knower of all the universe. Loka Vidu. Anuttara Purisa Dhamma Sarati. This is very nice. Anuttara Purisa Dhamma Sarati. Whatever have to be awakened. He had been awakened. He realized it. Anuttaro Purisa Dhamma Sarati. He Dhamma Sarati means he turned the wheel of Dharma. You know, Sarati means a charioteer. You know, he's a charioteer. So he is a king. He is a preacher. Uh, like a, a charioteer, he turned the wheel of Dharma where he preached the Dharma to the sentient beings as a charioteer. Dhamma Sarati. Sasta Deva Manushana. Sasta Deva Manushana means. Teacher for gods and humans. As I said, not only Buddha teach to human beings, he teach to God as well, like Indra, Brahma, and so on. You know? So that's why he is teacher of men and, and gods. Okay? This is, uh, and then he's attained Buddhahood, the Buddha, Bhagava Iti. So this is the qualities of the Buddha that we always uh, um, contemplate upon it, then we have the faith, the confidence in the Buddha in order to practice the Dharma. Okay? That's why we take refuge in the uh, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Why we're practicing, why we take refuge in the Dharma? Because the Dharma is so sublime. Dharma is so sublime that it's very good in the beginning, very good in the middle, very good at the end, which is exists before the time exists, exists every time, everywhere it surrounds you. So, Swakato, Ehi Pasiko, come and see. You should not, you, you are not like propagating Dharma like that, you know. It's not a converting a people. But let people come and see. Let them see, let them learn, let them experience the Dharma itself. Then only they know the value, the taste of the Buddha Dharma. You know, that's why you say, Ehi Pasiko, come and see. Opanaiko, which is exists in many, many existential uh, period of time. You know, that's why all the Buddhas come again and again and preach the same Dharma, 84 Dharma Dhar, to the sentient beings. All the 28 Buddhas and future thousand Buddhas to come. Okay? Which lead, which lets you to, to attain the state of Nirvana or you become a Samyak Sambuddha in your f near future. Who knows you or me can become one of the thousand Buddhas in future time. That's how we attain the state because we practicing what the Buddha teach and put into the uh, into our daily life and by that we experience the dharma and we gain the realization from the practice of the dharma you know and sangha is like we take refuge as i say sangha is very important to propagation preservation of the buddha dharma so we take refuge in the sangha as well so that's why we t always when you take refuge the buddha dharma and sangha always understand these qualities uh contemplation on these three jewels yeah this is very very important 
So now we go to uh, Four Noble Truth. As I say, Four Noble Truth is not that so hard. Okay, I make it very simple and easy. And I merge with the uh, three Lakshana Sutta together, which is Anicca, Dukkha, Anatha. Anicca means impermanence. And a dukkha means suffering, and anatta is not soul, non soul theory that Buddhas expound, which is very new to the Eastern religion like Hinduism, Vedic, and so on, which is the belief on self or belief on Atman, you know, the soul. So, and by this three lakshana of sutta, the three characteristics of the world that Buddha preached, uh, which is uh, duk, uh, anicca, dukkha, anatta, which later by these same three. Uh, prince, uh, three characteristics become in three principles of part of uh, Lamrim, which is uh, renunciation, bodhicitta, and shunyata. Why? When you understand the anicca or impermanence, your heart will lead to your renunciation. Okay? When you understand the suffering, the dukkha, your heart leads to bodhicitta, awakened mind, altruistic mind. When you understand the anatta theory, you will understand the shunyata. So that's why I say Theravada Vajrayana is it's every comes from there, every comes from this source, the root. So you can you you should know how to to interconnect these teachings together. You know, it's like a, a, a more in detail expound these teachings in, in Vajrayana or Mahayana. Okay? So uh, as far as what I see, let me see the Buddha's teachings on uh, three lakshana of the sutta. The Buddha said all compounded things in his Parinibbana Sutta as well, when Buddha go into Parinirvana, he said all compounded things are subject to impermanence. Why? Because all these things was uh, without of self-independent uh, existence, inherent existence, as I say. Because uh, as, I, as I say, uh, this is a bell, okay? This is a bell. This bell is not what we are thinking. If this bell exists by itself, I will say no. Why? Because this bell was constructed by some heat, by some metals, and some by workers. They used their some kind of conditions, you know, with kind of conditions together, put to it together, we making a thing. And this thing with our mind we label it as bell. But if we extract every elements, everything from this bell, whether this bell exists or not by itself, it is no. This is not self. This is what the Anatta theory actually is. And also it's subject to impermanence because it's changing by time and time. And by this, you understand the suffering because suffering comes from the changes, come from the impermanence where everything is changed. Your mind is changed, your body is changed, your physical existence is changed, the everything, the reality is changed, everything is changed. So in that, we understand the suffering. That's why the Buddha said in his first, first teachings of uh, Dharma Chakra Pavatana, okay, uh, the Buddha said, Dve me bikkave anta pabbajitena na sevitabh yo chayam kabe sukama sukhaliko nuyogo hiro dhagammo potu janiko anariyo anatta samhito Yo chayam atta kilamatta nuyogo dukko anariyo anato samhito ete te bikkave ubho anta anupagamma majjima patipata tatagatena abhisambuddha chakkurani jnana karani upasamaya abhinyaya sambhodaya nibhanaya sambhattati. What the Buddha was saying here is that by there is addiction to indulge to sense pleasures. You see, we always addict to it. We always all your problems is actually come from the desire. No, I won't say it's a desire. It's like addictions, like successive desire on something that impermanent. Something is subject to change, but you think it is impermanent. You think it's permanent, but you attach with it, you are leads to suffering more and more. So, the Buddha said the self mortification. As I say, Buddha choose to be in Matthyamika Marga. In here, in in Pali, it says Majjima Patipada. Means Matthyamika Marga in the middle way. Where Buddha mortification himself as a great ascetic, he becomes so thin, he suffer himself. You know this kind of how to say extreme uh, happiness and extreme suffering is not good for you to attain enlightenment. So in this way, our Nagarjuna was actually extract his teachings into a very middle part from this. Actually, what the Buddha have teach in very in detail manner. So Nagarjuna is very siddha. 
So he used to expound these teachings in very uh, middle way, without any extremes and without any nihilist. Yeah. So in uh, in in the middle way of Majjhima Patipada, Buddha attained the state of calm, attained the vision, attained the enlightenment, the perfect enlightenment of insight, of wisdom. So we always that's why we say whatever practice that you are doing, whether it's sutra or tantra or meditation, whatever spiritual practice that you do. Try to be in middle path. Try to be in very, very in the center. Don't be so extreme. Don't be so nothing. You know, you should be in middle path. So the first uh, teachings that Buddha teach after he, he, for these five people, he say that, Idam ko panabikkave dukkam ariya satcham. Dukkha is the first, uh, first truth that he expound, the Buddha expound, the blessed one is expound. What is that? Jati pi dukkha. Jati pi, jati means birth. You see, when someone was giving a birth, you see the pain of the mother, even the pain of the child itself is very pain and very, I won't say gruesome, but it's kind of pain, physically pain itself. You know, jati pi dukkha, jara pi dukkha, aging, you keep changing. For that, so someone who is very attached to their body, when they see the wrinkles in their face on someone, they become very sad. So, attached to the body, jara, jara pi dukkha means aging is the suffering. Vyadi pi dukkha, disease is suffering. Maranam pi dukkha, death is suffering. Uh, okay, this one we know, right? Birth, old age, death and sickness, uh, we all undergo these problems, these issues. But now, the Buddha said, Appiyehi sampayogo dukkho. Whatever you don't like, whatever you don't like or someone that you don't like, they keep come to you. The thing is keep come to you, but you don't like them or don't like that thing. It come to you. So, apiehi sampayogo dukkho means it also leads to suffering. And then the Buddha said, piehi vipayogo dukkho. What is piehi vipayogo dukkho? It says, Separation from the beloved one is suffering, like your loved ones, like your family members, like your girlfriend, boyfriend. Those you have feel very loved and very dearest, they was gone. And this feeling or this uh, nidhanas itself is a subject to suffering, dukkha. Yam picham nalabati tam dukkham. Not obtain what is one desire suffering. Okay, let's say today I want to uh, to buy a Mercedes car. So I keep my money and everything. And then suddenly my money is lost. And then I can't buy what I desire. So that desire, that thing is also suffering. Sankitena panchupadana khanda dukkha. All the five aggregates. All the five aggregates. The five uh, nidhanas, your ayatana, sorry, uh, your five ayatanas, like your senses, are also subject to suffering. Okay, why Buddhas? This is one is very general. If you see the, another three Lakshana Sutta, the impermanent uh, in the dukkha, uh, subject to dukkha, these teachings, the Buddha said got three types of dukkha that uh, human beings or every sentient beings was undergone. What is it? Dukkha, dukkha, uh, parinama dukkha, aparinama dukkha. So what is uh, this three truth of Dukkha that Buddha expound is Dukkha Dukkha is your physical pain, like your mental pain, your uh, your physical pain, and you get a wound, and it is kind of pain. This is Dukkha Dukkha, which has come from your physical pain. And then uh, Parinama Dukkha. Parinama Dukkha, as I said, every subject, every component things, even your emotions, even your mind itself is subject to change. So whatever is change, you are leads to suffering. Okay, parinama. Parinama means changing or evolution or changing. Parinama. Parinama is dukkha. And then the third dukkha that Buddha said is that um, aparinama dukkha. Aparinama dukkha means something that are a subject to samsaric cycling again and again. It's like it's changing. It's like cycling. You know, you are coming again, you're going again, you're coming again, you're going again. Without knowing this, you think that it's permanent, this is what we are, is existent, we is a fate, fated, then I think this also leads to the suffering. You know, Aparinama Dukkha, we want to something permanent, we want something to as it is, but actually it's not. No? So this leads to a suffering. So all the Buddha said, Vyadipi Dukkha, Jarapi Dukkha, Maranampi Dukkha, Apiyehi, all these things the Buddha summarized into these three categories. 
you know, dukkha dukkha, parinama dukkha, aparinama dukkha, these three dukkhas, which is Buddha expound in the sec the, in the very first day of the night. He teach the Dhamma Chakka Pavatana at the day and night he teach this uh, three Lakshana Sutta, which is very, very nice. When you understand this Sri Lakshana Sutta, then only you can understand these first uh, teachings of the Buddha. Okay? This is the first teaching, Dukkha. And then uh, Buddhas teach uh, Dukkha Samudayam. How we can free from this suffering. Yeah, this is very, very important. We, we know what is suffering. We know what is, um, what is the root cause or the root of our problem in this samsaric existence. Now the Buddha said, Yayam tanha pono bhavika nandiraga sahagata tatra tatra bhina nandini seyyatidam kama tanha bhavatanha vibhavatanha. The Buddha said, whenever in this samsaric existence the craving arise, comes from where? Craving of what? There's so three types of craving the Buddha mentioned. Kama tanha bhavatanha vibhavatanha. Kama tanha is for your sensual pleasures. Like you go for a pub, you're having a lulubi. You're having a very delicious food, but you attach with it excessive lust, excessive desire. So this is a kamatana based on your desire. And the desire comes from your ayatanas, your sense. So whatever sense pleasures that you're having, but leads to your craving. So this kamatanha, the first one. The second one is bhavatanha. Bhavatanha is a craving for existence. I see some people like, okay, this life I cannot get. Okay, this life I cannot achieve something. But maybe in future or next life, I will attain that thing. I will receive that thing. I will achieve that thing. So this like, yet, in order you do not cut off your existence, yet you want to reborn again and again and again. Not because of great compassion to have beings, but because of your pleasures, your craving to come again. So, Bhavatanha. Then the third one is Vibhavatanha. We say for non existent non-existent of what you don't want to be in this world. As I see some people, I, uh, I'm suffering so much. I don't want to be in this world. I better I won't die. Or I don't want to get reborn again. But yet they don't have the wisdom how to escape from this cyclic existence. But yet still they, they, they are trapped in this so-called uh, non-existential realms. No? So Vibhavatanha. Kamatanha, Bhavatanha, Vibhavatanha. By these three cravings, we are subject to suffering. Yeah, it's very, very nice teachings, the first teachings of Buddha, you know. So, how to cessation of the suffering is Buddha said in here, idam ko panabikkave dukkha nirodham ariya satcham yotasseva tanhaya asesa viraga nirodho chago patinissago mukti analayo it is a complete extinction of that craving, giving it up, relinquishing it, liberating oneself from, detaching oneself from it. So this karma tanha, bhava tanha, vipava tanha, by knowing it, by directly experiencing it, you actually try to cut off this existence, or this tanha, the craving. When you, how you cut off this craving, you can do shamatha meditation, vipassana, and all the Buddha's teachings you apply in your daily meditation, you understand the root cause of it, and you give a, uh, antidote for your root cause of your problem, your craving, you know? So I don't want to go deep in that uh, teachings, but I can even come back to this uh, uh, point, yeah? So uh, how to end this uh, suffering, how to free from this suffering, as I say, uh, Buddha said, Dukkha nirodha gamini patipadda ariya satcham ayam eva ariya attangiko makko ariya ashtangiko makko They got eight types of um, part Samma Dishti, Samma Sankapo, Samma Vacha, Samma Kanmanto, Samma Ajivo, Samma Vayamo, Samma Sati, Samma Samadhi. So, eight noble path. So, in this eight noble path, you can uh, divide into three, which is Sila, Samadhi, Prajna. Okay, uh, morality or virtue, Samadhi, or concentration, and Prajna means wisdom. So, this eight noble path, we can uh, divide into uh, three parts. On this okay Samma Drishti as I say as a Buddhist whatever you are practicing like Theravada, Mahayana and Vajrayana the first important thing is to have a right view right intention of your practicing Dharma some people are practicing uh, Vajrayana some people practicing the Tantra part the secret part you know they become like yogis they they want to do like all kind of uh, shaman or magician things if you don't have this proper 
a view or proper understanding of the Buddha Dharma, then whatever practice, whatever tantric practice that you're doing without this view, then I think your practice become like, how to say, become like um, like a shaman, like a magician, you know, like a voodoo, you know, like that. That's why even in our Vajrayana tradition, there's a one uh, one story where a monk practicing uh, um, Bhairava, I don't know what uh, higher tantric deity that he practicing, because of his great anger, you know, even though he is a great practitioner of Okay, let me say, it's a great practitioner of Yamantaka, of Vajrabhairava, but at the end of his uh, enlightenment or the state, little bit, a bit of state of enlightenment, he gives rise to a great anger. And that anger leads to be him to become a preta, become a vengeful spirit, or gyalpo in Tibetan we say. So, you see, that is a great, huge, uh, how to say, huge problem when you're practicing tantric part in Buddhism, like in Vajrayana, without a proper view or proper understanding of the Buddha Dharma, such as this uh, Three Lakshana Sutta, the Compassion, Bodhisattva, and all this, the view. If you do not have this proper view or right view, Samma Drishti, whatever practice that you're doing in the name of Dharma is not a Dharma practice at all. It's just mere uh, some kind of magic and that's it. Not a Buddha's practice. So always contemplate whatever you are practicing. Always contemplate according to the Dharma. So this is very important. First, noble path, Dhamma Drish, Sama Drishti, the right understanding and the right view. Then Sama Sankapo, right thought. Sama Vacha, right speech. Sama Kamanto, life actions. And Sama Ajivo. You know, Sama Ajivo means life right people. What is life right people? Do not kill, do not, you know, based on the precept, the five precepts that as a normal, normal people that we are doing. Then we go to Sama Vaya Mo Sama Sati Sama Samadhi, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Okay, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. This tree will lead you to wisdom, leads you to prajna when you practice the, the Dharma. And how to practice the Dharma? Also, the Buddha also mentioned this. Very nice. You know, Buddha said, okay, some people they read the, the Dharma, but they don't know how to practice the Dharma. Simple. There is a three stages where you practicing the Dharma. Buddha said, Patipati, Pariyati, Pativeda. Patipati means you learning from the book, from the sutta, or from your guru, from your acharya, from uh, how to say, from um, um, from your lamas or someone. You are Patipati. You are understanding. You are listening. You are reading according to your intellectual level. So Patipati, the first thing that you do when you practicing Dharma. Then second is Patipati, Pariyati. The second one is pati, Pariyati means whatever that you learn from your Guru, from your Lama, from your Acharya preceptor or your, from, your, from these books and suttas and all, you put into practice. Just by listening, just by intellectually, you're very good. But you, you do not practice, then I think your intellectual uh, books cannot save you, cannot liberate you. Okay? That's why I say it's very good if you intellectually good in Dharma teachings and learning Dharma. But if you do not put into your daily life into practice, then I think it's just vain. It's just useless. You know? So second is Pariyati. The third one is Pativeda. Pativeda is what? Whatever that you are put into practice, you know, in your daily life, in your meditation, in whatever, you put into practice and from that you experience and gain of wisdom. Whatever you experience from what have you learned and put into practice, and that experience is Pativeda. Pativeda means supreme um, intel, uh, supreme uh, wisdom. You know, Veda means wisdom. So this is the three stages or three ways that you are practicing Dharma. As many people, I think, they are really, I don't know, it's up to one individual to reflect themselves, whether they are actually practicing Dharma or some kind of... Um, Spiritual witchcraft. <laughs> okay? I'm just joking. Okay? Uh, so this is uh, all this noble eightfold part you should practice together. You know, it's like compound together. That's why we see Dharma Chakra, right? It's actually all links together. We have to practice the eightfold noble path always together. You're not like, oh, at first I'm practicing a, a Samadhrishti, right view, right view, right view. And then you go to second and the third. It's not like that. It's not like that stages. You have to practice eight into one together you know then only you can understand 
uh, the what the Buddha, the Eight Noble Path is actually is. Okay, so um, okay, make it very simple. Okay, these are four noble truths. As I say, all the Buddha's teachings, Mahayana, Vajrayana, and all the eighty-four thousand doors of the Buddha's teachings is based on this four noble truth. Or at least the Buddha say that dukkha and samudaya, the cause of suffering, or the origin of suffering, and the cessation of suffering. Whenever some people ask you, what is the major uh, importance of practicing the Dharma, you can say, Dukkha and Samudaya means origins of suffering and cessation of suffering. From this too, all the scriptures, all the 84 Dharma doors that Buddhas teach is based on this. You know, why are we practicing Tantrayana? Why are we practicing this Tantra practice? Because you want to become enlightened, you become a Buddha. You must free from yourself from cyclic existence. You free from self from suffering in order to benefit other sentient beings. As how you are suffered, they too suffer. Once you attain enlightenment, once you become a Buddha, Samyak Sambuddha, you can help them. You know? Just the difference between um, Theravada, Mahayana, Vajrayana is not the teachings. A bit of the teachings, I will say, because it's quite expound in very detailed manner. That's number one. Number two, the major difference is that the view. You know, Theravada, they focus themselves. You know, Theravada teachings of practice, they focus themselves first. You know, I attain Arahant, I attain the Nirvana for myself. I can help other sentient beings, other beings, but mainly focus of myself. You know, this is Theravada view. That's why Mahayana and Vajrayana, the people see Theravada as their Hinayana or the lowest view, lowest scope or lowest view like that. But actually it's not. Because they focus themselves first. For Mahayana, they, they, their view is more broad, based on compassion, where they see all sentient beings are suffering, so I must help them in the state of, even though I attain the Buddha quote, even though I become a Buddha, but I remain as a Bodhisattva to help those sentient beings attain the Buddha state first. So this is like a shepherd, a cow shepherd or sheep shepherd, like that. You know, this is the great compassion of the Mahayanist. And for Vajrayana, not only for sentient beings, but for myself and for others and all the sentient beings, even up until to like, you know, all the uh, 31 planes of existence. So that's how the Vajrayana system, because you see, you, you focus on yourself, you take three kalpas, three kalpas to become Arahant or whatever it is, to become a Buddha. Even a Bodhisattva, you must take three kalpas to become a Buddha. But Vajrayana, like, not like that. It's like expros turbo. Uh, ticket that you practicing Vajrayana either seven lifetime or in this lifetime you can become a Samyak Sambuddha, a perfect enlightened Buddha, attain the state of what the Buddha have attained. Okay, that's what that's the major different view and uh, teachings based on Theravada Mahayana and Vajrayana. Other than that, they all are the same, they all revered the Buddha Shakyamuni, they all revered the 84,000 teachings of Buddha, they all revered the, all the Arahant and Bodhisattvas. And so on. We are just the same. Just because the cultural difference, the attire difference is different, but the core essence, we all are the same. No? That's very important. Okay? So I cover up this four noble truth and the three lakshan of sutta, anicca, oh sorry, duk, anicca, dukkha, anatta. Anicca, everything is subject to change, everything is subject to decay. All the component things are subject to decay, even including your mind. Why? Because your mind is made from five aggregates. And these five aggregates processing by 12 nidanas, the 12 pratichya samapada. If you take it out, everything, it becomes anatta, no self. So some people say anatta means no soul, but I will say it's like without any inherent existence. Anatta means inherent existence. They have no something, a self-claiming self you know self-claiming or something like it's uh like we say it in in atman theory we say the atman the soul is no not ever changing it won't change it is absolute it will be omnipresent it's like that no in buddhist view it's not like that it's changing everything is changing because everything is uh uh how to say uh interdependent with each other's conditions that's it okay so by knowing this four noble truth and three lakshana or three characteristic, which is uh, dukkha, uh, sorry, anicca, ana, uh, anicca, dukkha, anatta, uh, impermanence, suffering, and anatta, by this only you can understand the Vajrayana three principal part, which is renunciation, bodhicitta, 
and Shunyata, which is the very core cool basic for you, for those who aspire to practice Vajrayana. So this is the basic teachings that you must know. Okay? So uh, I think I have talked a lot and I, <laughs> you know, talking a lot. And always remember, whatever, before you're going to do any, any Dharma practice or even go to your work or anything, try to take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Do not abandon this triple gem and your bodhicitta. If you are Vajrayanis, don't abandon your bodhicitta to help sentient beings. Recall these three every day as much as you can, you know. It's very important. Because if not, if you're forgetting, then I think your mind will... Uh, Will, will lead you to some other views, you know. I see some of my Vajra friends, you know, Vajra siblings or Vajra friends, and uh, I do not condemn it. Even normal people, you know, in, in, in our Vajrayana traditions, they are they don't have the proper foundation of Buddha, Buddha's teachings, you know. These kinds of very basic teachings, you know, they're practicing, they're directly practicing the Mahamudra, directly practicing the Dzungzen, uh, directly practicing this Tantric... Uh, deities like Vajra Yogini, Yamantaka and so on. I see some of them, so-called they are Buddhists, they outwardly look like a Buddhist, but what they are really practicing is not according to the Buddha Dharma. It's like change. They they do according to their own Dharma. That's why I say it's very Vajrayana is very creepy, very, very, very uh how to say you must be very careful on what you are doing. Even the slightest different view can lead you to something else won't lead you to attain enlightenment even atisha you see um when atisha uh, staying in tibet one of his uh disciple uh, uh tell to atisha that your one of your disciples was attaining arahant by practicing he Bajra. and atisha replied to him that thank god at least he achieved the state of arahant if not he will he will go into hell why because that person who practice He Vajra doesn't have the Bodhicitta. He doesn't have this Bodhicitta quality or absolute Bodhicitta and relative Bodhicitta. He don't have. He just practice for himself, you know, for his, uh, for his uh, Nirvana, for his cessation of all the things. At the end, he just attained the Arahant, but yet not he become a Buddha. It's like obstacles, you know. But even in that thing also he don't have. He practice He Vajra, so-called some kind of deity practice or tantric practice. Then I think you will, you will cause to reborn in uh, hell, somewhere in hell or pretas or hungry ghosts. That's why very very important the view, the understanding is very important in order you to practice uh, tantra practice or secret uh, practices. That's why in 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 older days in Mahasiddhas, even the Buddha himself he doesn't expound any tantric teachings very publicly. Just like ten, fifteen who are who are very advanced level in their meditation, advanced level in their view, in their wisdom, then only it was subject, the Buddha or the Mahasiddhas will transmit the teachings, the tantric teachings, the secret teachings. But nowadays, I don't know, because nowadays we all have the empowerment here and there, and then uh, I want, you know, we become like empowerment supermarket. We, wherever we want, we can take the empowerment. But if you ask them the view, I think they won't know. They won't have the proper view to practice this tantric uh, tradition of the Buddha. So I'm not discouraging you, whoever in Vajrayana, but try to learn more. Try to always contemplate yourself. Where whatever higher peak of uh, practice that you're going, always come back to the basic. Always come back to the basic and understand the view. Then only you can uh, put into your tantric practices. Then it should be good. Okay? So I think uh, this is for today uh, teachings. If you got any questions, you may ask. Any questions? Is there got any questions? Uh, maybe I can help you. In your Dharma practice. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Thank you. It's Marco from Italy. Okay. Um, 
I would like to ask you, if you had to summarize uh, uh, the subject of anatma in uh, short words, uh, uh, not being, uh, oh, how would you explain not self, anatman, mm -hmm. to someone who is completely um, uh, are now not knowledgeable about uh, Buddhism and this kind of teachings. How would you find uh, a simple way to uh, get people closer to the, uh, the Buddhist idea of an Atman? Okay. Uh, thank you. It's a very good question because I know lots of people, uh, actually when you say Buddhism, they will say this uh, first thing, ah, you guys don't have soul. <laughs> you guys uh, don't believe in, uh, you know, uh, eternal life and so on. Okay, I, I understand your question. Very nice. Thank you for your question. Yeah. So, uh, as you asked, uh, how I can summarize this anatta or in very uh, simple way, you can see even in our Vajrayana tradition, we say it's a shunyata. Shunyata is not something like emptiness. Is uh, without any uh, independent, uh, inherent existence. Like, as I say, uh, we see as a water, we label, uh, we see a water, when we label it as a water, but actually water is composed of uh, hydrogen and oxygen, right? But if you take out and everything, every particle and molecule, like, become dissolve everything, we be, we getting, it's still the water is there. I think, no, your body, even your body yourself was compounded by uh, four elements, right? Uh, wind, ele uh, wind element, um, fire element, earth element, and so on. And according to some condition, our body was created. If your body was extracted from this element, all the things, you won't be have a labeling thought because everything that you are experiencing, we see only, we attach with the appearance only, but we do not see the things that it is. So maybe you can tell to that person, though, who said what is anatman means, you can say, see the thing as it is, you know, very easy. If they want to ask more, then you can explain a bit how is the thing as it is. You can explain everything was subject to compound, you know, certain conditions, certain dependent origination, as I said, 12 links, which is maybe in future time, I will uh, conduct this uh, Pratichya Samupada, this 12 links of Nidana's very nice teachings. Okay, because all this uh, reality that we are living in is actually because of uh, dependent dependency of condition one and one another. I mean, scientifically, it's more can explain. But actually, in reality, it's like non-self. It doesn't have the inherent existence. That's it. So you must strive to see as it is, whether you see the, the appearance only. Okay. I know for, for some Thank people, you. like even among Indians, they won't accept this idea, uh, this thought of uh, anatma, shunyata. Even they have very uh, wrong view on shunyata. They said uh, nothingness. Uh, Buddhists are nothing. So whatever Dharma practice you're doing is nothing. It's not nothing. The shunyata itself, if you understand the anatma theory, even the anatma teachings of Buddha, if your mind is uh, anatta, uh, your 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 sense, uh, how to say, your sense is anatta. The Buddha explained in bed. I don't have the text. Maybe later I can say, uh, share with you. So in that way, uh, in uh, Madhyamika, Nagarjuna, Shantarakshita, all these uh, great masters, they expound this teaching and, um, you know, to make it more in detail, they make it as shunyata. The anatta theory become a shunyata in Vajrayana and Mahayana. It's a, without the inherent existence. So that's it. Because we, we humans, not enlightened, we tend to see everything, the reality, as what it appears to us, but it's not as see what it is. So that's it. Okay? Okay. So, uh, any other questions? If no, maybe I will uh, we do the dedication uh, prayer. So tomorrow, we will talk on uh, uh, this uh, three principle of part of Lambrim, which is based on uh, our Mahayana and Vajrayana system. Then we'll talk about the difference and similarity of practicing Sutra path and Tantra path. And then I will expound more about this uh, Vajra Yogini practice in detail uh, from what is benefit, how this Vajra Yogini practice was come, and uh, the Indian, ancient Indian way of Vajra Yogini practice, 
and how it goes to Tibet and how it changed in Tibetan uh, practice of Vajra Yukini. So all these things tomorrow will be uh, discussed and teach. So we will be stay tuned. Okay, if you have any other questions, maybe you can ask in group or you can um, message me directly. Okay. Okay, uh, Nakma, you can do um, you can do the uh, mandala offering and dedication prayers, Amita use prayers. Namo Buddha, mandala offering. <coughs> Imagining limitless universes with limitless worlds of four continents and offering it all together with the abundance of